you want to do the public loan, public uh, service. service loan forgiveness because you can get more forgiven. If I did the teacher loan, the max I can get is seventeen five. Yes, yeah, so we don't so want to do teacher anymore. So you want to go towards that. Now you're saying that there's a Biden loan. So what's the difference between those? So this is for everybody watching. Yeah. I'm going to use my phone for yeah. a second because yep. I had to read this to you guys verbatim. And, you know, I told you I think somebody black made this up. <laughs> you know, the administration is looking different these days. All right, so these are the five groups that are eligible for Biden loan forgiveness. Number one, again, I did make this up, and I'm not paraphrasing. Yeah. And I took this from uh, Forbes. So borrowers with current balances greater than what they originally borrowed. Everybody. Sense. Everybody. Okay, most like ninety five percent. Number two, those who entered into repayment on their student loans twenty five or more years ago. So, you, so they're changing it from twenty to twenty five. So more people. Yep. Yep. All right. Next one. Students who attended programs of questionable value. You ever go to a school that was questionable? <laughs> um. <laughs> When I sent this to my team, they were like, did you make this up? I'm like, no, I took it offline. So that's some of those, like, the online schools that kind of disappeared. But it, they're keeping it very blanket on yeah. purpose. But that would be like an example. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. All right, number four. Borrowers eligible for existing relief programs, including public service loan forgiveness. This you? This you? This is me. Who just haven't applied. That's me. No, I'm being serious. No, like, that's me. you. Yeah, that's me. Okay. The last one. Y'all ready for this one? Yeah. This everybody. Borrowers in financial hardship. Now, what qualifies financial <laughs> hardship, though? So the problem here is, and the, and the good problem, yeah. is that my belief, and I said this on my platform, they made things so broad because they want almost everybody to be eligible. Mm -hmm. You kind of can find yourself in one of five. Right. Then number two, is this an application again, or is this general? It has to be some form of application for you to be subjective like this. Then the last thing is, um, and to your point, number three, this is why I think it's going to pass through. So when they did the first round of Biden loan forgiveness, and again, I think everything's political anyway, they put it through, um, what was the one that Trump had said we can have the pandemic pause for? I'm sorry, I don't know that one. I think it was the Pandemic Act. There was a clause that a lot of things got passed through. Mm -hmm. So they tried to attach loan forgiveness to that, but that's not what that act was for. So the act that exists that they're going to put this program under is the 1965 act. So it's called the 1965 Higher Education Act passed by Lyndon B. Johnson. Okay. So I have a friend, shout out to Ebony. She uh, is a reporter for the White House, and she texts me all the time and says, what questions do I ask Secretary Cardona? <laughs> I said, you ask him these questions. Do you think that you're going to put Biden loan forgiveness again through the 1965 Higher Education Act? He said yes. So when it came out, that's what they're doing. This doesn't have to go through the Supreme Court. This can just exist. So what they did was they put a committee, committee of about 20 people together, uh, they, influential leaders, community members, um, good representation for, uh, of minorities, and they put together this parameter, what I just read to you, and this just has to now get approved. But good news is not approved by the Supreme Court. So that's good. Yeah. So what is what is SAVE? SAVE, the SAVE program. So this is uh, one of the best programs that I think is going to be very helpful. And we even see the difference with our clients and payments. So this is the new repayment plan. It replaces the repay plan. A lot of people got automatically placed into the SAVE plan. If you didn't get automatically placed into the SAVE plan, it's because they couldn't pull your tax information. Now they're just pulling it. So it's a good and bad thing. But long story short, this plan as of next year, because I just checked everything again before I got here, it used to be a 10% repayment. It's going to go down to 5%. Right now, it's still holding that 10% repayment. Mm -hmm. um, but the flexibilities of it, they're now letting you say, even though I'm married, I can say that I don't have access to my spouse's information, which is a big deal. Because if I have 150000 in loans and we may combine 200000 you think the whole money of the house is going to go to this payment. And most people, that's not the case. So now they can say, which is new than before, I cannot access my spouse information. So basically, like, can you evaluate me on just my information? So it's a big deal to right, help with yeah, people's payments. That's money. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, and that's for anybody? Yeah, that's going to be based off of income. 
So the sweet spot is going to be if you make about 45,000 that they increase that number it used to be like if you made 30,000, if you make about 45,000, you will have a $0 payment. If you are making 55 and most people make about 55 to 65, mm -hmm. that's going to allow you to have like a $100 payment. So we're really excited about it. We see our clients are like, are you serious? I can afford that. I can start repayment. So we just hear the excitement over the phone because before they get on the phone with us, their estimated payment is like $2,000 because it's just six-figure debt. Now, are, are these repayments that have to qualify, they, they have to be part of a specific pro program? Like I know before it was like mm -hmm. it had to be like income-based. and So the save is income-driven. Yeah, so, yep. The same thing. Mm -hmm. So it bases on how much you make, mm -hmm. percentage of that is what you're going to have to pay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Quick tip, because a lot of people did really well in the pandemic financially. Maybe they had got a side hustle or side business, whatever. Um, if that is not your case anymore, <laughs> right. welcome to the world. Yeah. You need to submit a pay stub. You need to let them know there was a financial change. You can put that. It says, what, did anything change? A lot of people skip it and hit no. No, it did change. You're not probably making the same money you made when you did your taxes in the pandemic. So you should let them know. So what now. you report, right, mm -hmm. for your taxes. So you should submit a pay stub. If that changes, well, you would be surprised. Like we, for example, I'm giving you a good example. We have clients that are, for example, travel nurses. You know nurses was, you know, running it up in the pandemic because they, they were needed. Need, yeah. Now it's kind of coming down a bit, kind of normal workflow. And then one lady said to me, she said, girl, she said, I made 300000 She said, this year it's looking like 90000 Right. She said, how do I show that difference? Yeah. So we had to send a pay stub. So if that income repayment was 5% of that, we're mm -hmm. talking about a huge difference in payment per yeah. month. Yeah, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's good yep. to know. Um, so what about borrower's defense forgiveness? So this program is the funniest one of them all. And like, so the thing about this business, um, when I first started it, not to be funny, I was like, I started a business that's consistent. Nothing's changing. This stuff changes every week now. Mm. Thanks, Biden. Keeps us relevant. So yeah. Borrower's Defense is one of those programs that literally is changing almost every three to six months. So Borrower's Defense, if you went to a school that they identified, there's about 200 schools that Secretary Cardona said these schools were fraudulent. For example, University of Phoenix was on the list. Uh, DeVry was on the list. Uh, ITT Tech. I don't know. This sound like every commercial. <laughs> every commercial you ever watched was on the list. No. Right. So if it was a for, if it was a for profit school with a commercial, check the list. Okay. All right. So when you see your school's name on the list, you're probably thinking, oh, but I didn't go there. No. When I tell you this July, they changed the rules again that said if you ever attended, they're gonna ask you a little bit more questions. You need a little bit more paperwork. You fill it in, you send it off, in about a year's time, you're probably going to get forgiven. And with this program, they're giving you back the money you paid on your loans, a check in the mail too. Now, I thought it was kind of like BS, I'm not going to lie, mm -hmm. but I have a friend who screenshotted me his ITT checks. I mean, checks because he paid for his education there. So it's a really great program. So while you're applying for these, these programs, and it's because most people will say, well, I apply for it, I'm going to mm -hmm. wait to see what the – the yeah you know the ruling is they stop paying all what, right what, what's what's your thought so right now we're in what's called the on ramp program mm -hmm. on ramp means they just are anticipating people are not about to pay this year like it's the you have until september 30th 2024 to get your life together with your student loans october 1 2024 they will start to report to your credit they will uh, you will be late. You will be going back into default. They'll take your taxes again. Not this year, coming up, but the following year, 25. Yeah. So you have a year to figure it out. So I say this with grace. If you need to go into forbearance, go into forbearance because you have this year. That's what this year is for. However, a lot of people don't have to put themselves into forbearance. If your lender is Mohelia in this example, Mohelia is putting people into what's called an administrative forbearance because they can't handle all of the workload that's coming their way. No. It's, this is new. They even are pulling in other lenders, just think about that, to do their work. It's a lot of people. So Aid Advantage is now processing all the, the, the consolidations for Mohelia right now. So for forbearance means that I don't have to, I'm putting a pause on the repayment mm -hmm. of my loans. Now, when I was in school, 
and I don't know if this might have changed. It's right. been a long time. You had six months yep. after you graduated or completed whatever, whatever schooling you had to begin paying the money back, yep. your loan back. If not, you would go into forbearance. Right. Are those rules still the change? Have, are they still the same, or have they changed over the past? It's still the years? same. So okay. you're talking about you were in school deferment. So yes. you use the right words, deferment for six months. Deferment for six months, yes. And then when you was like, I still can't pay, you yeah. went into forbearance. Right. What I'm talking about, what Mohilia is doing is putting people into what's called an administrative forbearance, which they cover the interest and still allow you to get months for PSLF. But those months, those those count toward because mm-hmm, you know, it's their fault. Basically, the government is saying this is on us. When right. there was a pandemic pause, the government said, this is on us. So right. when we were in a pandemic pause, if you had direct loans, you were in an administrative forbearance. 